Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go over the usual definition of limit and think of it in terms of a game. So, so the, the game is as follows. So consider this statement. You're saying limit as x approaches c of fx is l. Okay, there's, there's two players to this game. One is the prover and one is the skeptic. The prover's goal is to show that this claim is true. So the prover is trying to convince the skeptic that this limit as x approaches c of fx is l. The skeptic will try to try to sort of uh, ask tough questions and see if the prover can still can can still manage to show this. So so the way the game is structured is is as follows. So let me just go over the individual components of the statement for the limit and I'll translate or each one to or rather I'll say the I'll, I'll explain the game and then explain how it corresponds to this, to the definition you've seen. So we begin with the skeptic chooses epsilon greater than zero. Okay. This is the part of the proof or uh, no, the part of the the definition which reads for every epsilon greater than zero. Right, so that's the first first clause of the definition, and that's basically the skeptic is choosing epsilon greater than zero. Okay, what is the skeptic trying to do when choosing epsilon greater than zero? What the skeptic is effectively doing is choosing this interval L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. Okay, so the skeptic is effectively trying to choose this interval L minus epsilon to L plus epsilon. What's the skeptic trying to challenge the prover into doing when picking this interval? Hmm? Uh, whether whether prover can trap. So the skeptic is trying to challenge the prover, and this will become clearer a little later. But the idea is the skeptic is trying to challenge the prover into trapping the function when the input x is close to c, trapping the function output within this interval. And that's not clear, which is why we need to, co to continue this definition. Okay. The prover chooses, what does the prover choose? Delta. Delta greater than zero. And this corresponds to the next part of the definition, which says there exists delta greater than zero okay so in this picture which i have up here this is this is the the value c this is c plus delta and this is c minus delta so this so this is c and l so c is the x coordinate l is the function value which you are, or the limit of the function value okay the skeptic chooses this strip like this from l minus epsilon to l plus epsilon okay by choosing epsilon so the skeptic just chooses a number epsilon but what what it's effectively doing is to choose this strip l minus epsilon to l plus epsilon the prover then chooses a delta what's the prover effectively choosing the prover is effectively choosing this interval okay so that's this interval It's C minus delta to C plus delta, except you don't really care about the point C itself. But that, that's a little subtlety. You don't have to bother about. So the skeptic is choosing the interval like this. The prover is choosing the interval like this. How is the skeptic choosing the interval? By just specifying a value of epsilon. How is the prover choosing? By just specifying a value of delta. Okay. Now, what does the skeptic now do? Hmm? Hmm? We'll check. Well, there's, there's, there's something more to choose, right? Before checking. What, what, what is the definition? So for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that. For every. For every x such that something. So the skeptic shall, well, can now pick x 
Well, that's I'm, what I mean by checking. Yeah, but the skeptic could still like pick pick a value to challenge the proof, right? So skeptic chooses x, but what what x can the skeptic choose? Oh, but the, the the this interval, which the prover has specified, yeah. right? So the skeptic is constrained to choose x within the interval. That's by the it's the same as c minus delta. Is this all coming? Yes. Okay. C minus delta c union c to c plus delta. And the way it's it's written is for every x set in in this interval in the center one. Now, a lot of people write this in a slightly different way. They write it as, by the way, if, if you, you should see the definition video before this. So I'm sort of assuming that you've seen the definition, the definition is at this part. So you can map it in, right? So that's a lot of people write it like this. So just saying X is within a delta distance of C, but it's not equal to C itself. Okay, now the it's time for the judge to come in and decide who's won. So, so what's 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 the like? How does the judge decide? Uh, for the x that skeptic chooses, hmm. and see the corresponding y value. That's just the f x value, yeah. Yeah, if the x f x value is within the uh, the horizontal strip. Okay. Then the proof of it. Okay, so if fx minus l is less than epsilon, which is the same as saying fx is in what interval? Hmm? Oh, what? L, l minus epsilon, epsilon to l plus epsilon. epsilon. Then the prover wins. Otherwise, skeptical. skeptical. Okay. Now, what does skeptic can choose a really dumb x? Yeah. So that that's actually the next question I want to ask you. What does it actually mean to say that that this the statement is true? Is it just enough that the prover wins? That's not enough. So what do you what do you want to say to say that this statement is true? So for every every x in the interval. Yeah, for every x, but not only for every x. You should also say for every epsilon, right? So all the moves the skeptic makes. The prover should have a strategy which works for all of them. So this statement is true. So this is true if the prover has a what for the game? Winning strategy. Winning what? Strategy. Yeah. True if the prover has a winning strategy. So it's not just enough to say that the prover won the game someday, but the prover should be able to win the game regardless of how smart the skeptic is, or regardless of how experienced the skeptic is, or regardless of how the skeptic plays. That's why all the moves of the skeptic are prefaced with a for every. Right? So, for every, for every. Whereas all the moves of the prover are prefaced, well, there's only one move really of the prover, are prefaced with there exists. Because the prover controls his own choices. So when it's the prover's turn, it's enough to say that exists. But since the prover doesn't control what the skeptic does, all the skeptic's moves are 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 prefaced with for every. So by the way, there's a there's a mathematical notation for these things, which which you may which you there's a there are mathematical symbols for these, which I'm not introducing in this video. But if you've seen those, if you seen those and got confused, then you can look at the future video where I explain the mathematical symbols. Okay.